Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And a couple days ago, I published a video about upgrading an Ender, Creality Ender printer from the ability to print at 250C to 275C. The video generated a surprising number of comments where people indicated that they've had trouble with Micro Swiss all metal hot ends. I then searched the web and found a lot of people seem to have trouble with this. On the other hand, an equal number or quite a number more love this hot end. So I wanted to understand why some people have difficulty and other people, myself included, have very good experiences with the Micro Swiss hot end. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. The problems reported fall into two general categories. The first is that the hot end jams, in particular, if you finish a print, turn your printer off, walk away, come back a few days later, it's very difficult to get the old filament out. First problem reported. The second problem reported was people saying they just can't get good prints with PLA. So I'd like to address both of those topics. Before I address those topics though, we need to look at the big picture. A all metal hot end from Micro Swiss or anyone else for that matter, or even any style of hot end is just part of an overall system. Let's look at this picture. In this picture, you'll see that you have a component that pulls the filament off the reel or spool of filament that's called the extruder. You then need to guide it into the hot end. That's either a Bowden tube on a Bowden style printer, or even on a printer very often that is a direct drive printer, there may be a very small piece of PFTE filament that is used to guide the filament through the cooling block into the melt zone of your hot end. Every time you have a transition between one type of material and another, you potentially have a place where your filament can jam. More about that in a minute. In the case of the Micro Swiss all metal hot end, it's delivered as a kit. You can look at the picture here. There are a number of different parts. There's the actual heater block on the bottom. On top of that, you have a heat break a little titanium tube that is a different metal, so it will not get as hot as the heat block that will allow the filament to melt in the heat block or soften in the heat block and melt in the nozzle, but ideally not melt above the heat break, the titanium tube. Then you have a cooling block which has the fans on it. That's where you'd ideally like your filament to be relatively cool, not really melted, at all. So there are a number of different transitions inside this hot end. Now we need to think about how temperature is controlled in those transitions. As I indicated, you have the heater block, you have the heat break, and then you have the cooling block. Let's look at the size of the cooling block in this picture. On the left, you'll see the size of the cooling block on the Micro Swiss hot end. On the right, and you can see it's a round cylinder, is a much larger cooling block on the Prusa i3 MK3. That will make it easier for the filament to cool more rapidly because there's more surface area to radiate heat in the case of the Prusa. So you need to make sure that if you're using a Micro Swiss hot end, that your fans are operating properly. What happens when your filament jams in your Micro Swiss hot end? Well, my guess is, I'm not 100% sure, this is a guess. My guess is the filament heats up. When the filament heats up, it expands. If there's a little bit of heat creep and the filament starts to heat up above the heat break, it expands there also. Every place there's a transition between the melt zone and the heat break, the heat break and the cooling block, the cooling block and the Bowden tube, there's the possibility that when your filament expands, it will expand into tiny gaps 
between those components. So number one, when you assemble your Micro Swiss hot end, make sure everything is snugly pushed together. So here's what happens. You print something, your filament expands a little bit. Maybe it gets stuck on one of these transitions. You turn your printer off. You go back, you turn your printer on, you go to prepare PLA, it heats it to 200 degrees C. Just at the bottom of the full melt temperature for most PLA. You go to pull it out. It's stuck in one of those transition points. How do you solve that? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is heat your hot end to 230 instead of 200. So instead of going to prepare PLA, go to your menu on your printer, in case of an ender, it's, it's control, temperature, nozzle, set your nozzle to 230 degrees. That will be hot enough to make sure that the filament in the melt zone is fully melted. And if there's any heat creep, it starts to creep up during this process. Then, and this is key, push your filament down. So take and manually push some filament through, go to the front panel and extrude some filament. Extrude a little bit of filament so you see it coming out of the nozzle. Then pull it back out, it'll come back out. I have never had this fail to work. Now, another trick. If you just don't wanna deal with setting the temperature a little higher in order to pull the filament out, you can pull it out right away when you're done printing. Or you can have the printer do it for you. If you look on the screen here, you'll see the G code for the end of print G code, in this case in Cura, that I have for my ender printer. This is the stock G code. You'll see here on the screen the G1E-2. That says pull out, pull back two millimeters of filament. Change that to a bigger number. If you change that to a bigger number, you'll pull more filament back. Now what's the disadvantage? When you go to print, your filament will have to move further through your Bowden tube before it's ready to print. So you'll need to have a long enough waistline, that's the line that's printed often on the side or the top before your print starts, to make sure your filament is in the right place to print. So those techniques either heat up your hot end a little bit hotter, extrude, then pull out, pull out your filament right away, or update your G code to pull back on the filament a bit at the end of every print will all solve the first problem. Now let's look at print quality. I printed a number of really nice prints and I find overall the characteristics are very similar to the stock extruder. It's really not better, but it's not worse. So let's look at what I did. Number one, let's look at the screen. I changed my retraction. I normally run at 6.5 millimeters, 25 millimeters per second. Yes, I know 25 millimeters per second is slower than what most slicers default uh, an ender printer or many printers do. I learned this by watching a Maker's Muse video. I recommend you subscribe to the Maker Muse channel. Great channel, they have wonderful stuff. Uh, where he did a number of tests and found that a slower retraction speed worked better. Then I printed two tests. First, I printed a calibration cat. This is really a beautiful print. A little bit of ringing, but no different than any other print I've printed on an Ender 3 or 5 printer. Next, I printed a stringing test. This came out perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, this is an easy stringing test. I'll show you a hard stringing test in a minute. And finally, just to make sure I could print something for fun, um, but I, these prints were all relatively small because I wanted to be able to do this testing quickly, I printed this Flexi Dolphin. Beautiful print. This was in Hatchbox Black PLA, printed at 206 degrees. This was Matter Hacker Build PLA, also printed at 206. In both cases, I like to run my build plate at 60 degrees Celsius. Then I went and I printed a much more complicated print, the Kickstarter printer torture test as far as I'm concerned. And I did two of them at two different temperatures. Both these prints are really quite nice. I'll put a big picture on the screen, except for extreme stringing along the top, 
really a little bit of difficulty with those tall, thin towers. In addition, on both of them, I, oh, this is over-extruded a bit because all the pins won't come out. So these aren't perfect, but how does that compare? Well, this was printed about, I don't know, seven months ago. Uh, some of the towers are knocked off a little bit, um, and it's exactly the same. This was my Ender 5 stock, out-of-the-box stock extruder. A couple of the pins won't come out. In fact, if you look at this overhang here, uh, this is much better on this new printer. It's almost perfect with the Micro Swiss, but I've also have a different extruder. I have a different Bowden tube. So this is not quite as good as the Micro Swiss print, but the stringing is a problem. Is it possible to eliminate the stringing on this print? The answer is yes. So this is printed on a stock Prusa, and this is printed on a stock Ultimate 2 from Monoprice. The Monoprice Ultimate 2 is a brand new printer. Uh, excellent, excellent print quality. Prusa i3 MK3 also always has excellent print quality. Assembled, this is a thousand dollar printer. This comes assembled, it's a $550 printer. Um, this is printed on a Ender 5, but I expect you'd get the same results on an Ender 3 Pro. So we're talking two to $350 printers. So yes, they're different. What else is different? Both of the printers that printed these so beautifully are direct extruder printers. And so the Bowden tube, because it's a longer path for your filament, makes it more difficult to get the retraction just right. Do I think I can do better? Yes. I'm gonna play with retraction, I'm gonna play with temperature. I think I can do better. But when I have a print, and I'm fortunate, I have multiple printers. When I have a print that needs excellent, excellent towers that are very narrow and thin, where stringing could be a problem, I'll print them on one of my other printers. So what is my conclusion? Number one, jamming will not be a problem if you just take the filament out when you're done. If you don't wanna do that, modify your G code or heat up your hot end to a hotter temperature, extrude and then retract. Number two, print quality. I think it's the same. I don't think it's much better. You know, I can't be sure that this is better on this print than it was six, seven, eight months ago on my original Ender 5 unmodified uh, because of the nozzle. It might be something else that I've upgraded. I have a CME CNC upgraded extruder. I have Capricorn tube, and this is a different filament. So it's not a fair test. The idea here was not to be scientific, but basically to answer the question, can you upgrade to a micro Swiss hot end and use it reliably with PLA without it jamming all the time, getting good quality prints, as far as I'm concerned, the answer is absolutely yes. So if you've enjoyed this video, if you've learned something about printers in general, about architecture, about these techniques, give me a thumbs up. Please leave a comment. I love getting comments. I love getting comments where people disagree with me, where they point out mistakes, where they agree. That's how we're gonna continue to learn things together.